Welcome back, GX World. Sharpan here in this first video, or I guess technically the second video of this update. What is GX token uh, series? How do the economics and the exchange economics work for GX tokens pricing? So before I go into how global exchanges tokens uh, primary op market operations work, I need to explain what primary market operations are. And you know, one of the things that I've been most flabbergasted by as I uh, surveyed through the cryptocurrency industry and talked to coin issuers, talked to exchanges, talked to, I mean, I've talked to every person you can imagine as it pertains to ICOs, IEOs, and the coin appreciation value. One of the things that staggers me and continues to is how little people understand about primary market issuance and the effect that has on the price of a coin. So what is primary market issuance? Let's talk traditional financial markets. Primary market issuance is the first time a financial asset Typically, it's been reserved for tradable assets, highly tradable assets like securities, are issued from the person who's underwriting it to the public market. So let me give you an example. Uber is about to go public. I mean, they already went public. I'm just speaking contextually here. Uber is about to go public. It has, let's say, 100 million shares that it wants to float on the New York Stock Exchange. So it's going to call up one of its friends at JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, whatever investment bank that they're going with, and says, I have 100 million shares. JP Morgan and Uber then sit down to price these shares. Now, how they price these shares is frankly irrelevant to you because you're not gonna get to change that, whether they base it on previous valuations, whether they base it on what the market's gonna expect, whether they base it on what the bankers want, whether they base it on what Uber wants is all irrelevant to you because you as a person that's going to be a part of this primary market issuance has zero control over what they initially set the price for. So if they come up with the number, they're gonna say some $5 a share for this primary market issuance. Uber then issues the share certificates, the bank then underwrites the share certificates and the exchange floats the shares. So now there is a hundred million shares at a dollar, I'm just giving an example, floated. The first person to buy that from the exchange is technically buying it from Uber. Now it looks like you're buying it from the NYSC or whatever you're, you know, E-Trade, wherever you're trading. That's not the case. You're buying it directly from Uber. Uber set that price you now bought it for a dollar. This is IPO pricing. This is you know, how equities were priced for the better half of the last century. Now you are the primary market buyer. You've bought it for a dollar. Uber has collected one dollar in exchange for that asset. They will never see money from that share again. They have their dollar, they're done. They've made the sale you are now the first person to have that asset. That is a primary market issuance. If Uber is successful, or to be specific, if the bank is successful in pushing the stock, then all 100 million shares should get sold to its clientele, to people, and now there is $100 million worth of Uber shares issued today, and it's all been bought by someone, some entity, their primary market price has been established. What now happens is secondary market operations. And secondary market operations is whatever these people who just acquired these shares, just acquired this asset from the issuer itself wants to sell it for. Now, who gets to determine that? Well, they get to determine that. No one can force them to sell it or resell it at whatever price they want. So the question now becomes, what is the demand on the secondary market? for these shares, and what is the supply? Well, Uber issued 100 million, but 100 million might not be the supply moving forward because some of those investors might not be selling moving forward. It could be 100 million, it could be less. What we do know is it's 100 million minus X, X enabling to be zero if that's the case. Now, the question is, what do these people wanna sell for? Well, they're gonna go into their exchange when they wanna sell it, and they're gonna set a limit sell order probably, um, overwhelmingly, that's what they'll do. They're gonna say, well, I bought it for a dollar. I'm not interested in selling it, but if someone wants to buy it for $2, I can set a limit order for that, I'll sell it for that. And the order book on the sell side will start to rack up. So one, you know, someone will sell a million shares, $3, the order will start looking. You can see that order book forming. 
On the buy side, you now have people that weren't lucky enough to get in on the primary market issuance looking to get into it because they think it's a good equity investment asset, whatever token to hold. They can choose to buy in at the prices that these primary market uh, investors are selling it for. If that's a dollar, great, people will do that. The order book will meet at a dollar. If it's $2, the order book will meet at $2. And this is what occurs on the first day of trading on most publicly listed equities. The, the, the issuance happens, the IPO price, $10. And then by the end of day, you'll hear this a lot if you're watching financial news, end of day trading, Uber closed out at $50. That actually didn't happen to them, but it could have happened to them. And so that means that the person that was lucky enough to buy it from Uber bought it at 10 and was willing to sell it for 50 and that occurred in one trading day. And now who knows who has the share? It could have swapped hands 100 times in that time, but by closing it's at $50. Uber never made that $50. Uber is long gone, they sold it for 10. Okay. Now the person has it at $50 and that every transaction subsequently from the first one is called secondary market operations. And that's what the genuine price of the market is. Whatever the price is determined at secondary market is really what the price of the equity is. And this happens a lot when Uber or anyone overprices their coin or their token or their equity. They say it's worth $50, then they sell it. So they were able to sell that primary market and then the primary market guy's like, oh, I bought it for 50, I'm gonna sell it for 60 and no one's gonna buy it for 60. And they'll wait, and they'll wait and wait and wait. Maybe at some point the, the primary market issuers become desperate enough to sell it for less than 50. It happens all the time. And where the market panics, and now people are 40, 30, and that's how an IPO can go terribly wrong. The exact same thing happens in crypto. There's only two tremendous differences. Number one, there's no end of day. So this just keeps going and going and going and going. And the other one is that there is very little transparency on that primary market issuance. Before the invention of the IEO, which is an initial exchange offering, which is a, a vehicle of coin issuance that became popular in 2019, where you actually use the exchange, big exchanges like a Binance, to do your ICO, I'll make a completely different video about that because we have a hell of a product coming for that. But uh, without, before that, with 2018, 2017, during ICO mania, you were literally buying the coins from the company's smart contract wallet at whatever price they determined. And again, no one knows what occurred. No one knows who got paid or how much, and nobody knows. But anyway, there was some primary market. The primary market maybe was a penny, could have been $10. Now the secondary market will develop once the coin is listed on the exchange. So once a coin gets listed on the exchange, all the people who bought it on the primary market will either want to sell it or keep it or whatever it is, but now there is a buy side order book forming and a sell side order book. The very important thing you have to understand, the only thing I wanted you to catch is the company's job is done after the primary issuance. They have zero control over what happens after that. Literally nothing. Just like the primary market buyer has zero control over what the company sets the price for. He could choose to buy it or not, but that's all he can do. Now the market takes its toll. And I will, in the following video, talk about how order books work and how the market actually determines things when it comes to limit and market orders on these secondary market exchanges. Thank you so much.